sunny day. You know what time it is. Welcome, dark tourists, tomb crawlers, church crawlers, taffophiles, be what you may. I have wandered to a very quaint town of Willington today. You'll probably see behind me. Willington. The most British name that ever was British. Um, we're going to be taking a walk from here to the town of Repton. It's more like a village, really. And from there onwards, we will see a suggested church. If you can tell me who it was from my viewers that actually did suggest this church, um, it sent why. Weiston's church. Somebody did comment in one of my videos. I was going through my videos the other day for suggestions. I've got quite a few, so I thought, well, I'd stop uh, doing a lot of these suggestions. So whoever it was, let me know it was you, okay? Because I want to give you a shout out for who it was. So let's go and find out the St. Weiston's church in Repton. Hmm. Well, on the way, I have found another church as I'm leaving Willington by foot to go to Repton. This is St. Michael's. It's a very quaint little place. So, unsure if it's open. I'm not really interested as this isn't where I'm heading today. The place where we're headed has much historical significance. But um, this does have some big slate graves huh, over there. Um, and I'll just give you a show around as it's kind of like a two for one, I guess. <laughs> just thought I'd uh, show you this one along the way some uh, nice slates along the outside too. Oh, this one's nice. All the different names on there. And oh, look at the top of this one. It's got an eye and a cloud. And it says, in, out, God is risen. That's quite awesome. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go on to Repton. So, if you're a history nut like me, the main reason I have come to the town of Repton is its Anglo-Saxon and Viking heritage. The Wellington Bridge, which we're about to cross over now, um, which was opened 1839, used to be a toll bridge, but this river, the uh, River Trent, was most known for how the Vikings got to this town. Um, if a uh, town does have, or a village has, any kind of waterway, most likely Vikings boated down it and made their own way to get to the places. So um, we're going to follow on to the history Leyden Church, which is this way. It's kind of on the horizon there. Um, along this bridge, once long ago, where Vikings would have boated on down. So you're ready to go find some history? I am! Let's go! It's just a short walk along a very narrow road, but as long as you keep your wits about you, it's about, I don't know, 20 minutes walk from the Willington Centre, and you just look for where the school is, and it's opposite the school, basically. So, would you like a bit of history? Yeah! So, it is named St. Weiston's Church um, in the town of Repton. I want to say village, it's not a town, it's too small. Um, it is so named because the grandson of don't call me on this because I don't know the actual spelling and way you would say the name. The King Ethelbald from the Kingdom of Mercia. This whole area was connected to the Kingdom of Mercia during that time. Um, his grandson was Saint Wigston and the church was named after him. So uh, I guess Wyston, Wigston, very similar. Um, the reason that I have come today is not only because of its Anglo-Saxon crypt, apparently, underneath, um, it's also famous for the burial of two Mercian kings, which, as I said, King Ethelbald and St. Wigston were buried here, underneath. Um, it was reported that there were miracles that were performed at Wigston's tomb. A lot of people would make pilgrimages to here specifically, so that they could go see um, his tomb and be healed or whatever you would say is a miracle um, So it became a place where a lot of people travel very far and wide to come here um, it also is believed that there was a uh, Natural spring that was here too 
um, which was another reason I believe was why the Vikings came here. So uh, the Vikings went by the name of the Great Heathen Army, and in the year of 874 they wintered here. So um, obviously a very, very long time ago, but um, leading up to that point this was an abbey. So um, when the Vikings came along on their merry way and they were like, hey, we want to stay here. You're not allowed to stay here no more. And they took it for themselves. Um, it was 873 when the monks and the nuns fled and they took the remains of St. Wigston, um, Wigston, sorry, and they went elsewhere to keep it safe because obviously that was the main reason why people came there and he meant a lot to them. So um, they took it over from then. So um, I've just seen someone go through the door. You'll have to ignore that somebody is mowing the lawn over there, but I can't help that. Um, that I did see someone go inside, so I know that it is open. Yes. So we can actually have a look inside. Whether or not we can get to these crypts that I mentioned, we shall see. But it is a very beautiful place. Um, behind me this way, there is a vicarage, which is believed to have had the remains of 200 some odd Viking bones in a burial mer bound, burial mound, get it right, <laughs> very sweaty, very clammy. Um, so it does feel very connected to history here. So I'll take you for a little browse around the churchyard itself. Um, very impressive uh, steeple on this, I believe it said it was 65 meters tall which is freaking huge <laughs> but let's go have a look around at some of the gravestones and see what we see as we go around shall we well this gravestone is new to me i was attracted because of the awesome engravings on the top of it which looks like Perhaps he was a smith of some kind, um, or it could be that his life was cut short because of cutting a tree down. I'm sure that's what it represents, but it does say Samuel Marshall, uh, age 21, who unfortunately fell victim to a barbarous assassin on the 4th of February, 1786. That's the first time I've seen that. That's amazing. Well, that's a quick buzz around the outside. I'll probably come back in a bit as the lawnmower man keeps seeming to follow me around and I'm trying to talk and he's like, hmm, 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 trying to run me over. But shall we have a look on the inside as I just saw the guy tidying up? Um, I believe this is probably going to be one of the kings above the door. Okay, that's amazing with the sword in his hand there. So we go inside. But first, I'm just going to show you the bus bus that's here. I'm going to check first, I'm going to have to go down there. It's very tall. Okay, I'm going in. In guys, hope you're decent. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at this down here. Don't think you really can though on the camera. Oh. Oh. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna try and get some pictures. incredible. Um, on the way in there are two pillars here which do resemble the pillars that are in the crypt just in case you couldn't see them with it being so dark. 
Um, there's a few ruins here as well from, uh, I would believe, when this was actually still an abbey. Um, they do have a great Repton Trail pamphlet here. So I'm going to go and have a look outside because there is the, the Repton Cross um, outside as well. Um, and by the way, this is St. Wigston up here with his sword above the door. So let's venture out into Repton itself and see if there's anything else to see. I'd like to find the cross before I leave, but it is a very historic town. I have no idea that it's kind of left as it was, to be honest. Like, there's really old cars driving around. It's like gone back in time. But anyway, let's see what else we can see. There is the Repton Cross, and what is left of it anyway. It looks a bit like a pillar now. I'm not gonna try and cross the road to get to it, as it is now an island for traffic. But I think that's a good place to uh, conclude, really. The whole town itself is very historic looking. Like, we have all these old walls and arches. The school is just through there. So, yeah, if you love the history of the Kingdom of Mercia, come check it out. It's incredible. But from me, for now, it is goodbye. See you later.